Welcome to another episode of Unimog Shenanigans here with the Mog Toys. In this episode, I'm going to try to make a floor here, otherwise, it's going to be quite drafty under our bed. I think we have a start of a plan. Sometimes you have to plan a little bit ahead so that you can see what the next part you can plan is rather than trying to plan everything in one go. This is the organic engineering that you are no doubt familiar with by now. So my plan is to take this material and make two sticky out bits here. They're going to stick out on the side of the tire and then they are going to go up towards the back there. And their job is to basically, well, their, their physical job is to add strength to the back wall and the, the whole chassis and the box. But for a fabric cobbling purpose, their job is to create a partition between the sides here and the surrounding of the tire and that part of the floor. Uh, that means that I can do, I can fabric cobble this part and that part and that part and they can be in sections. In my head, ideally I'd like to fabricate the whole of the sheet metal thing and just basically slide it into place and tack it into place and see where it needs strengthening. There has to be beefy stuff here. It, there, there's no other ways than this one. The, the, the rear might hold, have to hold quite a lot of weight, so it needs to be very sturdy. So let's start with sturdifying and then we will do the other parts. So now I'm going to get very mucky because I need to remove a lot of oxidation from some iron. As you saw, I uh, used that horrible wire brush to get rid of most of the rust from there. And whilst my fingers are regaining feeling, I am going to uh, I'm going to lower the spare wheel so that I can put some sticks onto the back here, so I can then measure the right length and the configuration of the sticks that I'm building now. As usual uh, in the evenings I tend to not film very much because I'm frenetically trying to finish what I'm doing. To bring you up to speed I cut four pieces of metal. Well I also cut them to pretty much exactish lengths and I cut the angles of them and I chamfered them so they're basically ready to weld weld together. So, so the idea here is that this one is the horizontal bit and then this one is the 45 bit that corresponds to to this bit here. So they come out from there, correspond to this bit here and that sort of stuff. Welding those is a no-brainer. Even I can do that. However, what's happening next is the problem. You see, as they need to stick out there, I need to kind of think ahead of what I'm going to do. I need to decide what I'm doing with this sticky out bit here. I also need to decide exactly where they go so that there's enough spare space around the spare. No. 
then I need to figure out a way to clamp them. But above all, should I weld them there now? Or should I do something later? As these are part of the floor, I think they're pretty important. Not only because they're part of the floor, but also they're a structural part of the, the uppity straight bit here at the back. So, before I get too far ahead of myself with just doing stuff, I should probably think ahead about doing stuff. That probably didn't make any sense. Sorry. Bit of a clamping intermission here. I've clamped the fireball tool weird square together with the one of the minion squares. I put two of those dinky vice grips there and then I clamped it all to the table there and then I clamped these one to there and then I put some clamps onto the table. So hopefully this should be fairly accurate and I can put a few tacks there, turn it around and do the same on the other side and hopefully I can figure out the next steps once these are tacked together. My head isn't really prepared to fully weld them yet. I have a feeling there's change coming. Whilst the weather is doing its thing, I thought it would be good to make sure that these two sticks are as close to identical as possible. I have butted them up to there, I have put this uh, weird square there, and I put the clamp there, so hopefully those should be parallel and those should be done there. So if we look at this one, that is pretty good, that surface there. Then I clamped them together so that they're, they're parallel there. I clamped them to the table here. And then I put the minion square there with uh, those two clamps there. And as you can see, they are now, after a few grinding sessions, not perfect, but within reason. There's a tiny lip there. And I'm not certain that this surface is super parallel anyway. I want them to be as similar as possible so I can measure from it, not for welding or something like that. It's not a cylinder head or anything like that. So I think this is good enough to at least start fitting onto the truck. I have to keep in mind that the flatbed isn't actually flat either and those outriggers aren't very straight. So, uh, but at least I have a good starting point in making sure that these are pretty similar. Stefan Gottes Winter is probably cringing. <laughs> Hello, Stefan. Whilst the weather was happening, I uh, used some maths which resulted in numbers and a drawing. You can't see that because it's too white. I have figured out what the width of the new sticky out bits are going to be the the distance from the edges and all of that and the bottom line here is that uh, on the side of the spare wheel we have a movement of around 35 millimeters on top of that we are building this for the 36580 tire the mog is running the 33580 tire and the spare wheel, to complicate it, is the 12.5 tire. Now just for reference, the 365 8020 uh, has got a radius of 546-ish millimeters. The spare is 18 millimeters less and the tires that are on the MOG, the 355s, are 22 millimeters less than that. So already we have 18 millimeter extra space there at least so we have a movement of 35 millimeters and we have already extra space 18 to 22 millimeters and then we want to add an extra space on top of that just for you know manufacturing errors and uh, brain farts and all of those things but in general a little bit of extra space there i think is a good idea so we'll add another 35 millimeters on there which means now we are going to have a total of 88 millimeters between the tire and the wall. 
I haven't put in the cladding in there, the cladding will remove one or 2.5 millimeters depending on which thickness steel I'm going to use. But this gives us 514 millimeters from the edge to that line over there. So that's the plan now. With the scientific part now concluded, we need to get onto the practical fabric oblique part. I think I have a plan. Let me see if I can make any sense of it to you. I'm going to bridge this gap here that goes to here. That, give, that eliminates the flex here and I can lock in the angles on these ones so that there won't be any mistakes on that one. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this bar because it's actually in the way, it's inside this bit. This surface is going to match up with the new pieces. But before I do that I'm going to tack on another piece below here so that I can rest the new pieces onto that and thus hopefully get the same plane and the uh, same angle and all of that. The next thing I am thinking of doing is that I am going to tack weld metal onto these ones so that they are in the correct position so that they are spaced apart correctly side to side and that they are locked together front to back and also so that they don't twist so that they stay parallel. One long stick on this side that bridges at least two outriggers so that I can clamp the new sticky out bits onto the underside of that. Then with this bar in place I can also put another stick across here so that I get the floor level correct again. Doesn't sound too complicated at all does it? Just to get two sticks into place. Anyway let's see where this ends up. I have now located these two sticks and they will be attached on the side and their job is to constrain this one forward and backwards. Before I get on with that though I want to weld these ones together temporarily with some sticks so that they stay parallel and level and all of those things which means that I can put them on there as one unit. 1232 millimeters is the distance from the inside to the other inside of these two sticky out bits. I was initially going to position them here and hopefully get them right. However, I quickly realized that I don't think I can get very good precision doing that. These are the two bars that I'm going to weld onto the big bars temporarily. So I thought that it is better if I weld stops on these ones so that I can get the distance correct by just simply clamping them. And by having these two next to each other and using a square to draw the lines, I'm pretty confident that I can make the two stops on the two bars fairly accurate. So here is one thing that I've done. I've clamped one minion square to the long side of this minion square that allows me to keep this edge at pretty much perfect 90 degrees this distance and then I've got two off cuts that are now clamped onto here. Uh, now I hopefully can tack those and then I have another mark down here which is fairly exact and I can clamp two other pieces onto there and weld them that way. So that's my idea of trying to make these two bars fairly parallel. So the sticks are now tacked together uh, and I must say that it is uh, it's uh, more sturdy than I expected it to be which is a good thing because I don't
Before I start welding supports onto the back here, I want to get rid of this sticky out bit here. Uh, I'm going to just chop it flush with that. As you can see, I have tacked this bar into place here and its job is to continue the floor, the virtual floor there. And uh, on this side, I've uh, hung the battery from there because this one needed to go out a little bit further. So I have now managed to get one that one to 45 degrees in relation to, to these ones here. So that should now be tickety-boo and I can tack weld this one here. I thought uh, it would be funny that I have the battery there and it worked out really well. Just starting to lift but like so. Yeah. Anyway, that sort of shenanigans is that you have to come up with uh, when you're doing this sort of organic engineering. It's time for the first trial fit. These bars have been welded, tack welded onto here. I've removed this one and replaced it with this one. I have put a bar across there so that uh, the floor will go under here. I hope you can see that. And uh, the same on this side. So a bar there. Oh yeah, and I clamped this one across here. So the new upper sticks will come from there under here up to there if it works so this is sort of where theory meets practice okay let's see what happens I'm going to wrap up the day for once. I knew I made these ones too long. I didn't realize how extra long I made them. So most of the evening has been spent trying to make those shorter. This is the amount of shorter that I've been doing. Thanks to my friend, we used the uh, circular metal cutting saw to cut these off little by little and trial fitting it. Uh, in hindsight, I should have measured it so we at least would have had a little bit of a close proximity idea of what we were supposed to be cutting. Uh, I have bad experience with angles and we'll get to an example of that in a second. So my idea was just simply to cut thin slivers off and sneak up on perfect fit. What instead has happened is I've wasted tons of time and I am absolutely completely physically exhausted. The problem with this is now that I can get my fingers under here. Uh, this surface should be parallel with this surface here. And that is the problem that we have been trying to solve. Uh, you can see there, that is the gap that still remains. And at the moment, what is preventing that from happening is actually that this support bar is now hitting this piece. So I now face the choice of either chopping a little bit more of, uh, of this piece or making a dent in the support bar or moving the support bar. Neither of the options are very nice. Getting back to that angle thing, if you spot the issue here, uh, these ones here should be the same height as these ones. So, you see there. so uh, we came to the conclusion that instead of measuring from the bottom here, plus 40, because this is these ones are 80 
and these ones are 40, so I should have put another 40 under here, and then I should have measured from that point up to this point. Instead, I think that I measured from this point, which means that this surface here should have been 80 millimeters longer. Actually, the diagonal, the 45 degree, degree diagonal of 40, of 80 millimeters. So now, I'm absolutely knackered and I'm going to finish and uh, try to find my Zen somewhere. It is not around here, I can tell you that. So, pack up, get cleaned, find Zen, restart another day. And when it came to repositioning the support bars, uh, things are a lot clearer when you're actually doing it. What I actually ended up doing was I welded uh, the temporary support one on the front here and then I took this off and then I realized well I can just scoot it back can't I. Since that was done I have cut off the bars here with another 12 millimeters and as you can see here now this one is now pretty, pretty good there. It is not as good right here. Now that is actually quite good because I've taken the paint off and I have marked the, the front there where it should be. So that is now at the correct distance from side to side. And it actually fitted. When I mark this one with the same distances, this one is now a little bit too far that way. Which corresponds with this bar here being a little bit too long, therefore scooting this one a little bit up, causing that discrepancy there. So I'm now going to carefully grind a little bit off there and hopefully that will not only lower this part but also skew it that way. I've welded these pieces in so that should now cover up my mistake. Please don't tell anyone. I then put the bar on top of here uh, to check whether I actually got it right this time and yes it is actually very accurate. I'm also very surprised at how, ac how well it fits. I've got the marks on the uh, on the front there on that outrigger and I've got the marks on this uh, piece that is tack welded onto here and they all fit within one millimeter. I'm, I'm astonished and especially because I've measured from the outside and the, the, the distance on this bar here and the front one they're all just from the calculations on the paper and it actually fits and it fits really well. That never happens. I'm astonished. I'm surprised. Next step is going to be that I double, triple, quadruple check everything, put some more clamps on and then I'm going to tack weld it into place and then I'm going to fully weld it. Well, the sticks are in. I welded, they are fairly accurate and well, they are as accurate as I could get them. So I'm very pleased about that. I have no idea what the next step is going to be. That was a successful day. It is obviously quite annoying that I had to do this much work, but it's the end result that counts and the end result is pretty tickety-boo. It's not perfect, but I'm leaving the temporary structures in here for now because I don't know what I will need them for if I need them. Uh, I want to brace this part here. I think uh, because this is a U-channel I don't think this is uh, very good at taking the load up and down like that so I want to do something about that. I just don't know yet if I want to uh, brace it to there or if I want to brace it to there. More work to be done but not today. Tonight I'm just going to disconnect from everything.
after I welded these things in, I, I can feel that there is a bit of flex when doing this. And that is perfectly natural because this bar here is a U-bar and it is designed to hold weight this way uh, and it is not designed to take the twist from that way. So to counterbalance that, I think we need to connect this bar with this bar. Now unfortunately, let me see if you can see that, this is the shock strut, shock spring assembly thingy tower and it needs to be accessible and serviceable. With the floor on top of here, this long bolt will be very difficult if not impossible to move, especially if I weld a bar in here. The solution to that is to turn the bolt around so that it falls out that way rather than pulls out this way. However, the key word there is falls. Should the nut unscrew itself in this current position, the bolt should still stay in here due to gravity. If we turn it around, the bolt will eventually fall out and then we will be without uh, any dampening on that corner. The solution to that is to uh, drill a hole in the bolt and put a split pin or something else in there to prevent it from falling out. The plan with regards to the reinforcement here is that I will make a thing that uh, kind of snakes a little bit around this one so that uh, we have space here for tools and uh, so that we can change this bit. It always seems to be a little thing that you didn't think of when you started thinking about things now that you thought about it. Now you need to think about that thing again and redo the thing that you didn't think about. To do these reinforcements between the two outriggers, I started off by cutting the 40 by 80 by 4 box section. I cut it to 30, milli, uh, 30 centimeters long and then I put a 22 and a half degree angle on here in preparation for the 45 degree angle that's going to go around the shock tower or strut holder shock mount. And then I have spent a very long time going back and forth trying to get this uh, wedge shape uh, part done correctly there and get this one right there too. So now with a little bit of thingy that sits there nicely like that. And now all I have to do is to do that same process for the other side and then obviously tons more stuff. With the two rear pieces cut I have now cut these uh, pieces that make it go around the shock towers, shock holders. Uh, the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to tack weld these onto the pieces. That way I can organically determine the length of the final piece that goes to the front outrigger. just clamp this 40 by 40 here uh, along the other one just to make sure that we have the the new reinforcement piece here uh, in, in line but uh, one interesting thing that this showed us is why we need to do this so I'm gonna go tug in the tail there this is me just hanging a little bit off this one and as you can see there's a bending motion here otherwise the front wouldn't lift uh, of the stick if it, there was no bending motion, the whole thing would go in a parallel motion rather than lifting up to the front. So that's why we need to do these. Uh, 
as you know yesterday we finished at this state with these sticks I now need to weld the seams fully and then I need to make a wedge here to bridge that gap With the upper shock bolts mounted in the new orientation, as a bit of extra security, we've decided that we're going to drill and pin uh, the bolts here. So we've ground a flat, and now I'm just about to drill so we can pin with one of these. I've now fitted the bolts that I was uh, drilling and pinning. So you can see now the bolts coming through from here and the nuts on this end. So to stop it falling out, if the nut shakes loose, we've um, put a split pin through here. And it all looks pretty good, actually. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> someone's a comedian. <laughs> so I'm not filming it again. So now we have someone counting around in the background. <laughs> So now when we have two sticks like this with the gusset bracing thing there uh, it is time to fit them and then weld them. Crazy Cass has kindly removed the paint and marked where they should go so uh, uh, let's put them into place. <laughs> As you can see the stick there is now clamped. We're using these two to hold it level with the outriggers and that one to guide it straight according to the other one. And that means that we're now ready to tack weld this in place. I think it's a good idea to tack weld both sides before starting to do fully welding and putting excess heat into this. I always put too much heat in there. As this piece is now welded in, I thought I'd try the, uh, the flex stick again. Uh, I'm gonna hang completely off that and you'll see the flex. There we go. I'm gonna fit. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's the flex. Yes, it does flex. Does it flex a lot less? Yes, considerably a lot less. So, mission accomplished on that one. Uh, Keep in mind that uh, the most of the structural integrity for the rear will come from the side walls being in tension.
I have spent most of the morning cutting up some sticks. There's two sticks up at the front there, one in the center and one on the side there. Then there's two more sticks in the middle here and then there's two at the back here. The purpose of these varies a little bit and it's not uh, always fully scientific. The purpose of these ones is to reinforce this floor here but also try to prevent these ones from swaying sideways when there's a huge load up on the back wall. The job of these ones is to take uh, the load on the floor but also if there is any sideways movement in this point then those will also help with that. Again it goes to these uh, sticky out bits here uh, that's all kind of linked together. These two here their job is simply to hold the floor. Uh, this span is a little bit too big for my mental comfort to be okay. So a diagonal brace will hopefully set my mind at ease. I don't know if it is technically or structurally actually necessary, but it just feels a little bit better. Because this is the main uh, trunnions, uh, I have positioned them this way so that the forward and aft movement here will be directed straight to there. The same here, any forward aft movement will be directed to there. This should now mean that this is triangulated and therefore fairly sturdy. This one in the center here, that one's job is simply to hold the floor up again. The span there is a little bit too big for my mental comfort. And you might have guessed what this one is doing. Yes, holding the floor for my mental comfort again. With all these sticks in place, we should now be in a position where there isn't huge spans and everything should be fairly well triangulated, which means that hopefully we should have a fairly sturdy floor and we don't have to add more weight to it. Uh, these ones are actually not that beefy, so we're not adding very much weight at all. The only beefy-ish ones are the ones here at the back. They are the 40 by 40 by 3. Before I can weld them in I need to use my toothbrush to get rid of the paint and then clamp them in place and then just uh, bzz, 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 with the hot metal glue gun. Let's do it! Whilst we are speeding through this time lapse that took almost three and a half hours in real life, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all viewers of my videos. I'm constantly grateful that you're sticking around. Thank you. It might not be blatantly obvious why I make these videos, but the bottom line is that in my life, since I can remember, I have encountered a lot more discouragement than I have encountered encouragement. Phrases such as, why do you want to do that? or I don't think you can do this, it's too difficult, or why would you want to build that, are far more common than phrases like, I'm sure you can do that and I'm happy to help, or just give it a go, it'll be fine, or even if nothing comes out of it, at least you tried and you learned something. This is why I want to show you that you can do it, you can make stuff, and it's not as difficult and intimidating as you think it is. Don't be afraid of failure, in fact, as long as you're learning, nothing's a failure. This is also why my videos contain explanations of why things end up like they do, along with how they've been made. I spend a lot of time putting up numbers and basic graphics to help you along. In the end, I want you not to be afraid, and I want you to figure out your own projects and make something. As I'm editing this video, at the end of January 2022, my channel is approaching 4000 subscribers. If you think there are more than 4,000 people out there that could benefit from some encouragement and knowledge, please share this or another video with them. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. I love it when a friend sends over a link to a new video and an undiscovered channel. Thanks for your time, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the video. Now back to making silly stuff.
as I was completely knackered when I finished the welding I now have to do the rest of it even if I want to avoid it as much as I can but yeah it's not going to get done by itself and what I'm talking about is to grind down uh, the welds and make it look pretty uh, and basically erase any evidence of my rubbish welding I'm not looking forward to this because it is uncomfortable, it is hot and it is annoying, it is noisy, dirty and everything else that makes it all inconvenient and bleh. yeah. However, the reward after that is a little bit of tinkering with other stuff, which hopefully I'll tell you later. I have now removed the evidence of my chunky welding and the thing that I'd like to do next is that this, this area here between the recessed step and the rear wheel is the only place where we can have an external locker. So I'd like to prepare for that by making some form of fasteners under here where the floor is going to be. So I don't have to do that when I've welded the floor. I've also got some uncapped holes here. There's one down there, 40 by 40, and then this one, 40 by 80. So I might as well cap those whilst I'm doing stuff and welding things here. For the locker fastening system, I decided to go with uh, M8 extension nuts. And I decided that the three would be fine. Three is enough. Uh, because of the air tanks being in the way at the back there they can't go much further than this uh, cross member can hold anyway so if i weld one at the back of the cross mem cross thingy here that should be enough for the back and then i weld two on the front here i have found this piece of scrap that happens to have an eight millimeter hole in it so i put a threaded bar through there and now i have clamped it uh, to here which means that hopefully that should now be uh, level with this bottom surface here so that when I come to put bolts in then uh, it won't be too wonky and I opted for nuts rather than bolts because I don't know how far down the box is gonna go or what configuration it's going to be so if I would have put bolts in I might have made them too short, for example. This way I have quite a bit of uh, purchase in the actual nuts, so uh, even if that box or whatever gets mounted here is quite far down, it should be okay. I opted to go for 10 centimeters of this surface here, and then 10 centimeters up to there, and then 10 centimeters again there. So hopefully that should be fairly simple to fabricate. I have then made some plates job is to go in there and another one that goes in there. I have used the sucky sucky machine to suck out any wasp nests or anything else that uh, might be there within reason. So guys if you're in there this is your last warning if they speak English otherwise it's just some neighbor shouting at them. The nuts are now welded into here uh, and uh, seems to be okay. Uh, this one, because this one is only 20 high, this is 40 high, uh, I had to make a little bit of a uh, extra bit here, put some metal on it and then weld the, the nut to that one. But now there's a triangular system here where I can mount a thing under here, a box probably. And then we have this one here is capped, as is this one. So, a little detail done. And before I finish for today, I'm going to weld this bar on here, tack weld it temporarily, and then I can remove the three other temporary support bars. That allows me now to put the wheel back up, which I will be needing when I do the floor there. With the reinforcements put in place, uh, I thought I was done, but 
I was looking at this and uh, kind of thinking that, you know, uh, maybe a little bit more wouldn't be too bad of an idea. Uh, this part at the back here is going to be covered with uh, sheet metal and we decided that we would use the 2.5 millimeter thick stuff there so it's pretty hefty what we decided for this moment but what in my head I thought that you know if there's going to be a sticky up bit here that you know holds the roof and all that stuff that it would probably be a good idea to connect that thick beam uh, with this thinner beam so uh, I made some sticks to go in here so without further waffling I'm gonna start massaging and finessing these two pieces so that they fit really well and then I'm gonna burn I mean weld them in uh, and uh, then hopefully it's time for the sheet metal on there it's the small things that sometimes get you and you go ah oh, I should have thought of that before luckily I just realized something when I was fitting the stick the problem I'm having at the moment is that this bar this temporary bar here uh, is welded onto the the stick here and I'm trying to clamp and fit this this uh, angled part of the stick onto here and I'm trying to do it as nicely as I can fit it as tightly as it goes and what I'm doing is that I'm I'm filing this with a hand file because the electric angry end only goes kind of so far in there before the the efficiency of the, the teeth in the pointy bit there starts getting uh, rubbish so I'm filing it with the square hand file and I'm thinking about that I need to get this as tight as possible and then suddenly it dawns to me that this is temporary and it needs to come off and I'm just about to fit a piece of metal above those tack welds so yeah I need to remove those tack welds completely they need to be ready to go when I'm taking this temporary piece off. I cannot access them from the other side. I'm glad I caught that one. Anyway, on with it. So we have the clamp champ situation going on here now. I'm going to tack weld this one and then do the same on the other side and then I'm going to fully weld them once they are all both tacked but basically I have two clamps down here so that it aligns to the bottom of this one and to the bottom of that one then I have the long bar here uh, that is supposed to then hold it uh, level and then still another one on top there and it's all clamped together so now the two diagonal extra sticks are in this is the driver's side and here we have the passenger side and it should now be a little bit stiffer that's what i said anyway i think that's where we're going to have to end this episode it wasn't really the episode that i wanted to make but uh, hey what well, do you know organic engineering comes and goes as it does so i think we're done with the reinforcements on the flatbed former the artist formerly known as the flatbed can we finally start building some more cladding we'll see stay tuned no you don't have a tuner stick with us and hope to see you in the next one